In this laser cutting tutorial, we're going to go over some laser cut design generators. Sometimes we need to make something with a laser cutter and it's a simple design. And chances are someone in the open source or the maker community has already made a generator or a file that we can use for that project. We don't want to necessarily copy objects and then use them for other purposes, but we can use designs that people have shared for that specific intent. Then we can use those designs to learn from. Then we can create new original designs and share them with the community and use them for our projects. Remember that your creative work is valued in no small part due to its originality. We don't want to waste time on making something that already exists, like a square box. It's a great practice exercise to learn how to model a square box, and I recommend it. But if we want to learn how to use a laser cutter, we can use pre built designs to test out the laser cutter and then learn more about how laser cut parts fit together in order to make better designs. We stand on the shoulders of giants. Human progress is made by learning from those that have come before and then contributing your part to that progress. There's a great website, boxes.py, that has generators for all kinds of different laser cut boxes in common forms. These are really great because they are parametric models that we can type in a few parameters and then cut them out on a laser cutter. We have shelves, wall mounted tools, and they can give you a lot of inspiration and ideas about how to use different joinery methods and ways of assembling laser cuts. So what we're going to do is see how can we download a simple model from boxes.py and then make sure it's set up correctly for using our laser cutter. Let's go ahead and just use a simple box. So I'm going to use this box right here. Once you select the box, then you're going to see all kinds of different settings. Some of the settings are twirled up because there's recommended settings, for example, finger joints. We can leave this at the default setting. And the same thing for a lid. In this particular design, we're not going to worry about the lid. And then we can decide how large our box wants to be. For something small that we're just starting out, 100 millimeters is fine. So this will be 10 centimeters square. And then we're going to either use the outside measurements or the inside measurements. If you ever want to know more about a specific parameter in boxes.py, you can click on this column of horizontal lines. This will then show you all the different information that you need for those specific parameters. And this can help you design your box based on their definitions. You need to measure the thickness of your material. It's a great idea to start out with some thin material so your laser cutter can cut quickly and a standard piece of thin plywood is generally three millimeters, also known as one eighth inch, but it's never going to be exactly the same. So it's best to use digital calipers to measure this. Then we can choose a file format. I recommend SVG or DXF, depending on what program you're using. SVG is great because generally from boxes.py, an SVG file is scaled correctly in millimeters. A DXF file should work as well. And especially if you're using it in Fusion 360 to make modifications to the design. Tabs are for holding complex parts down. Generally, it's not so necessary on laser cutting, but if you have something that may move while it's cutting, you can put tabs in and then they get cut out later. One way to avoid the need for tabs is to do all etching operations before through cutting. Labels are helpful for knowing what you're going to cut and what the different pieces are, but you want to make sure that you don't have the labels be cut unless you want to. Reference, this is super important. So we have 100 millimeter reference rectangle because as we'll see, different graphics programs treat vector files slightly differently. They're generally pretty close, but they can be different. And we want to make sure that we have the proper scale for our box. Then you can choose different styles for inner corners. We're going to leave this at the default loop. And then burn, also known as curve, determines how much compensation there should be for what the laser cutter cuts. We may think that a laser cut cuts very thinly, but it definitely vaporizes some of the wood. Just like a table saw blade cuts approximately a 1 8 inch or a 3 millimeter kerf, a laser cutter also leaves a kerf. If you know your specific kerf, you can type it in here, or you can use boxes.py burn calculator. So this will print out a template, and then you can test the fit based on your laser cutter. And this is going to vary from laser cutter to laser cutter to material for material. For the particular laser cutter I'm using, I know the burn is approximately 0.126.
Once we have this, then we can click download. Save the file on your computer. You can also save to a specific URL to come back to if you want to remember these settings. And you can click generate, and then it'll show you the files. So here we have the files that we're going to cut for our box. And you can see right here at the bottom, this is the reference rectangle that we're going to check for having our file scaled properly. And here is a nice picture of the box that we will be making. So hopefully ours comes out just as nice as this box. Now let's go ahead and check how to make sure that our box is the right size. Here I've opened the box in Adobe Illustrator. You can use Inkscape or any other vector graphics program. I want to select the rectangle down at the bottom here. Over here at the top right, we see properties. It says width 283, but what is it? It's 283 pixels. This isn't very helpful because all kinds of screens and files have different resolutions. What we want to do in Illustrator is to change the document unit to millimeters. How can we change Adobe Illustrator document units to millimeters? We can go to File, Document Setup, and then right here we'll see the units, and we change this to millimeters, and then click OK. Once we do that, we'll notice at the top here that we see a clear and exact 100 millimeters. That means we know that this file is correct for this scale. Let's take a look at the same file in another program. Here I'm in Fusion 360. This is another common program that's used for making, digital fabrication, and laser cutting. I can insert an SVG. Then I can select the plane to insert the SVG. And it offers me a scale distance. I'm just going to press OK. And now I'm going to check that 100 millimeters. Here is the 100 millimeters, and I can press Inspect and click this line. Now if I look at this, this is 26.458 millimeters. That is not 100 millimeters. I need to calculate the scale difference for that. So how can I calculate the scale difference? Well, there's plenty of scale calculators online. If we type scale calculator into Google, we'll see this GiniFab. This is a really great website. There's plenty of others, but we can click on this. And then we can put in our scale ratio. So this is asking for the ratio, but if we scroll down, we can click Scale Factor Calculator. Then we get Scale Factor Calculator, and we can actually type in numbers. Back in Fusion, I note that the length is 26.458. Then at the Scale Calculator, I can type 26.458, and then what length should it be? It should be 100. Then I get my Scale Factor. So I can highlight this Scale Factor, copy it, go back to Fusion, I can scale the SVG. In order to scale an SVG, we need to unlock it. So if I right click Edit Sketch, and then I highlight the entire SVG, and I click Lock, this will unlock the SVG. Then I can finish my sketch, and I can highlight all of the SVG. Then I can click Modify, Scale. I've already selected the entities, then it asks for a point. And I need to put the scale factor. So I'll paste the scale factor in and I'll press OK. Now let's go ahead and measure that line again. If I click inspect, then I click this line at the bottom, I now get 100.001 millimeters. This should be exactly 100, but because of the scale factor, it's not exact. So we want to be very careful when we're double checking reference measurements to make sure they're close. Down here at one thousandth of a millimeter, it's going to be OK. But on very precise things, scale factors and conversions can matter. For importing in the Fusion 360, a DXF may be a better option from boxes.py. Hopefully you're able to generate a box from boxes.py and then check the dimensions and the reference in a graphics program or a 3D modeling program of your choice. Happy laser cutting.